Hello, I'm Sabrina Ruda. Today is Monday, February 8th, and here's what's making news now. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced that Canada will stop airstrikes in the fight against ISIS on February 22nd. Trudeau announced that airstrikes are not as effective for long-term efforts. Canada will triple the number of special forces that are sent to conduct training. Trudeau says Canada will also be sending more troops to be deployed in the Joint Tax Force. Skedline.com has been covering the Jean Gomeshi trial since it began last week. We have Skedline reporter Ryan Swain with today's update. Thanks, Sabrina. I'm here at Old City Hall Courthouse for day five of the Jean Gomeshi trial. Uh, just some quick updates. Uh, day began with defense lawyer Marie Hanayan addressing Judge Horkins over a recent disclosed statement made Thursday and Friday by witness two, Lucy Decouter, and witness number three. Uh, they made statements to the police. However, info wasn't disclosed to the defense until Sunday at 11.45 and Monday morning at 8.30 a.m. Uh, this was days after the information was originally released. Uh, Hanai's response to the changes was, I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. Uh, following the opening statement was a recess, and then following the recess, witness three was questioned by the Crown. Uh, allegedly, assault took place on a park bench where consensual kissing led to Gomeshi grabbing the witness by the arms and then neck. A uh, witness did, however, meet with Gomeshi on a later date at a party. But the night ended in an argument, and the witness says she cut ties with Gomeshi entirely. Uh, following the recess, the witness will be cross-examined by the defense. Make sure you follow Skedline for a uh, live Twitter update of the trial. I'm Ryan Swain for Skedline.com. Thanks, Ryan. Toronto Homicide Police are investigating after a 23-year-old man was shot and killed in a parking lot in Brampton. Police were called to Masta's Lounge around 5.30 a.m. Sunday. When emergency crews arrived, they found the man without vital signs and suffering from one or more gunshot wounds. The man was rushed to hospital where he was pronounced dead. There could be a taxi protest that will interrupt NBA All-Star Weekend. The Toronto taxi industry is in competition with services like Uber. The industry expects Mayor John Tory to start making some changes. The newly formed United Taxi Workers Association plan to discuss this further on Wednesday. We now go over to Andrew Escobar with the weather update. Thanks, Sabrina. Uh, it's a great start to the weather this week. It is mainly cloudy, 3 degrees, but feeling like minus 2 with the northeastern winds, with a chance of showers later on today. Let's head over back to Brian in the studio for a look at, your, at this week's forecast, including the forecast for the NBA All-Star Weekend. Thanks, Andrew. Happy Chinese New Year to everyone. And for those people who attend festivities around the city, today will reach a high of plus 4 and a low of minus 1. Rain, rain will change to snow overnight. We're looking at an accumulation of 2 centimeters. On Tuesday, snow will continue but will change to rain showers near noon. We'll have a high of plus 2 and a low of minus 6 with 70% chance of flurries. Temperatures will dip on Wednesday as we'll have a high of a minus 3 and a low of a minus 8 with chance of flurries all through the day. On Thursday, we'll have a mix of sunny clouds with 30% chance of flurries. We'll have a high of minus 6 and a low of minus 13. On Friday, will be the start of the NBA All-Star Weekend. We'll have a nice weather condition with a mix of sun and cloud, but cold temperatures will continue to persist as we'll only have a high of minus 5 and a low of minus 22. For the rest of the All-Star Weekend, we'll have sunny conditions, but you will need your thick clothing as we'll have minus double digits as our high. That's a look at this week's weather forecast. Back to Sabrina in the studio. Thanks, Brian. Two 17-year-old twin males that died in a bobsled accident on Saturday have been identified as Jordan and Evan Caldwell. The brothers were tobogganing in an Olympic park in Calgary after hours. Police say they crashed into a gate as they were speeding down the track in their own sled. Six other teens were taken to hospital with injuries following the incident. The eighth U.S. Republican debate took place Saturday. Here's what happened. The debate started off a little awkward with Ben Carson claiming he didn't hear his name being called to enter the stage. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie repeatedly interrupted Florida Senator Marco Rubio to make his message clear that he is more qualified because he runs a state. One topic of discussion during the debate was Obamacare. Donald Trump promised that he would create something better, such as a health care savings account. We now join Alana Pranjic with the latest in entertainment. Thanks, Sabrina. Super Bowl 50 was loaded with performances from some of today's biggest stars. 
Lady Gaga kicked off the show by belting out the American National Anthem. The real treat came during the halftime show when Beyonce took the stage. Coldplay may have headlined, but it was R&B superstars Beyonce and Bruno Mars who left a lasting impression. Coldplay opened the performance with their hit Viva La Vida, performing on a colorful stage surrounded by dancing violinists. After playing two more songs, Bruno Mars took the stage, bouncing through Uptown Funk alongside producer Mark Ronson. All eyes were on Beyonce, who danced her way through her latest single, Formation, while surrounded by female dancers dressed in all black. Wrapping up the show, Beyonce and Mars joined Coldplay frontman Chris Martin on stage as images honoring past halftime performers lit up the stage, including Stevie Wonder, Black Eyed Peas, and Michael Jackson. Following the show, an ad announced Beyonce's Formation World Tour beginning in April. This is Beyonce's first major tour in three years. The clip directs fans to her website and tickets will be available starting February 15th. The two biggest names in hip-hop are collaborating once again. Drake and Rihanna shut down the Real Jerk restaurant in Toronto last Friday to film the music video for their new song, Work. Rihanna was releasing sneak peeks of the upcoming video through her Snapchat account. The pair has teamed up before on the hits What's My Name and Take Care. Work was the first song released from Rihanna's new album, Auntie. A Friends-themed pop-up coffee shop is coming to Toronto. The new pop-up shop will be modeled after the show's iconic coffee shop, Central Perk. According to the Facebook page, the shop will feature coffees and pastries inspired by the show, as well as old scripts and memorabilia. Even though an exact location has yet to be announced, it is scheduled to open on June 24th. Topping the box office for the second week in a row is Kung Fu Panda 3. The DreamWorks Animations film brought in $21 million this weekend. Universal's Hail Caesar came in second, earning $11.4 million, starring Josh Brolin, George Clooney, and Scarlett Johansson. Coming in third and earning only $5.2 million was Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. That's your box office weekend roundup and all your entertainment news for today. Now back to Sabrina. Thanks, Elena. Following the earthquake in Taiwan, rescue workers are using heavy equipment to search for more survivors in a fallen building. An eight-year-old girl and her aunt were rescued today from the wreckage. Authorities believe that there are more than 100 people still trapped inside, with the death toll currently at 40. 23 migrants drowned off the coast of Turkey today. The migrants were trying to reach the Greek shores when their boat sank. Four people were rescued and 13 are still missing. One of the migrants were saved by a fisherman, while the other three were found by a Turkish Coast Guard helicopter. Rescuers continue to search the area for the rest of the missing individuals. North Korea's latest rocket launch could cause a buildup of U.S. defense in Asia. U.S. officials say that this could put more strain on their ties with China and Beijing. North Korea states that the launch was for scientific and peaceful purposes only. The satellite was sent into orbit yesterday and celebrated with a display of fireworks. We head over to Jonathan Tonin with Sports News. Thanks, Sabrina. A big day in sports yesterday. The Denver Broncos defeated the Carolina Panthers 24-10 to win Super Bowl 50. The Broncos' defense was a force to be reckoned with as they sacked the Panthers quarterback Cam Newton six times. Broncos defensive end Von Miller won the MVP award of the Super Bowl for his outstanding defensive plays. Super Bowl 50 held in Santa Clara, California, did not produce a high offensive game, but it was definitely one for the ages. In his first Super Bowl appearance, Cam Newton did well, but did not come out with the win. After going 15-1 in the regular season, he did not face much adversity from the media until now. Sitting down and slouching behind the podium, Newton did not fare well with questions, responding with one word or dry answers. After having enough questions, he stood up and walked away from the reporters. There was no dabbing from Newton. The biggest Super Bowl question is Peyton Manning's final NFL game yesterday. The 39-year-old has not given an answer on whether he is going to retire yet. Peyton is one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game, and if he plans to retire, at least he'd be going out on top. Now to some Humberhawk sports. Here's Caitlin Mukinen. Thanks, Jonathan. Humber's varsity teams competed for a spot in the OCAA championships this weekend. Humber's badminton team won the men and women's West Division regional titles at the University of Toronto Mississauga. Olivia Lay, along with mixed doubles teams of Fusita Nilyak, Jessia Singh, 
and the men's doubles teams of Adam Dong and Ryan Chow were undefeated throughout the tournament, placing them first within their categories. The athletes will advance on to the OCAA championships along with men's singles player Jonathan Young and women's doubles team of Michelle Chow and Sandy Chen. Humber's basketball teams also had a good weekend playing the Redeemer Royals in Ancaster. The women's teams clinched the OCAA West Division title with their impressive 81-59 win over the Royals. They continue their 16-0 winning streak heading into the OCAA championships at Niagara College. The men's team will also head into the championships after an 82-77 win, continuing their 10-game winning streak. The women's volleyball team played the Royals in Ancaster on Saturday. After winning all three sets, the Hawks lead into the championships with a record of 15-0. Sadly, the men's volleyball team didn't do as well at their game, losing all three sets, making their seasonal record 9-6. And that's all for your Humber Hawks Roundup. I'm Kayla Nukinen. Now back to the studio with Jonathan for more sports updates. Thanks, Caitlin. The NBA All-Star festivities will be held in Toronto this weekend at the Air Canada Centre. The star-studded game will include 15-time All-Star Kobe Bryant, who will be playing in his final season. Toronto's Kyle Lowry will be in the three-point contest, along with the NBA scoring leader Stephen Curry. Zach Levine of the Minnesota Timberwolves will look to defend his slam dunk title on Saturday night before the Stars take over the show on Sunday. Four games were held in the NBA yesterday. The Boston Celtics defeated the Sacramento Kings 128-119 to in Boston, as the Marcus Cousins had a game-high 31 points. Denver beat the Knicks in New York last night, 101-96, to with Will Barton contributing with a double-double. Orlando edged out a victory at home against Atlanta, 96-94, to and the Los Angeles Clippers took home the victory against the Miami Heat, 100-93, to as Chris Paul had a game-high 22 points. Now for some hockey news. The Montreal Canadiens won 2-1 in a shootout yesterday against the Carolina Hurricanes, as Ben Scriven stopped 34 of 35 shots for Montreal. The Washington Capitals bet the Philadelphia Flyers 3-2 as Alexander Ovechkin notched his 30th goal of the season. And the New York Islanders crushed the Edmonton Oilers 8-1, led by Kyle Ocposo's hat trick. Well, that's all for sports. I'm Jonathan Tonin. Now back to the newsroom. Thanks, Jonathan. Up next, we have Jane Li Tian with more information about the history of Chinese New Year. Chifuin 同族亲友相辅祝贺今年以猴子为元素的剪纸、面具、广告横幅在加拿大多伦多市中心随处可见。办猴子、耍狮子、舞灯笼、扭秧歌、踩高跷等华人庆祝春节活动的照片和视频、湖面的整个西方的媒体